what's up everybody it's your boy Tristan Barracks here the digital storyteller I'm super excited to be with you once again for another episode of Cinecut we will be talking about a dope photography program it's actually a new version of the photography program Luminar it's called Luminar Neo and it's actually developed by a company that was founded in Ukraine that still has a lot of Ukrainian workers so if you purchase this app or you choose to purchase this, this app you'll be supporting the efforts out there and supporting this company are you ready I'm ready let's go Woo! If you're anything like me, you're a digital storyteller and you're passionate about using video and photography to tell dope stories. And you know, when I do photography, one of the things I love about photography is the fact that you can capture an emotion or a moment, um, something that happens in one frame, in one single frame. The things that I don't like about photography is all of the retouching work. I hate doing retouching work. I hate, you know, removing trees or removing people out of shots. What if I told you there's a program out there that actually takes your images and allows you to do retouching in 30 seconds or less? Would you be interested in something like that? Of course, ding, 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 ding. The program's called Luminar Neo and I'm gonna demo it for you today, so check it out. All right, so we are in Luminar Neo and uh, as you can see, it automatically opens up to all of our photos. So these are some of the Luminar um, example photos or test photos, but I also loaded in some of my photos that I shot in the last couple of months uh, that I want to use as examples from Capture One. The The cool thing about Luminar that is that um, Capture One and Luminar or Lightroom or Photoshop, they all kind of work in tandem with this particular program. So you can actually be working in, um, for me, it's it's Capture One, but it could be Lightroom as well and export uh, you know, your, your slightly edited photos or adjusted photos, raw photos into Luminar. And let's take a look at the first example here. So this is something that a lot of people know about with Luminar. I'm gonna take this, this um, the skier, uh, he's not a snowboarder, but he's a skier. I'm gonna double click on, on it. And when I double click on this snowboarder here, I'm actually going to click on the edit tab. And what I wanna do with this particular image is I want to actually change the sky. Um, I don't really like the blue sky. I wanna add some clouds or add some, uh, just some dynamics to the sky. So I'm gonna scroll down to where, uh, where we're under the topic creative. And we're gonna go to sky and under sky, I'm going to go to select skies or sky select. And as you can see, I have a ton of different sky options. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna click on this second sky and I'm gonna wait for a moment and now it's loaded in there. All right, just like that, I have a different sky or I can go to another cloudy sky or I want to, you know, make it a little bit more dynamic. Maybe I want to make it so it's almost like uh, sunset or dusk or morning, right? And as you can see, it it adjusts the the tonality slightly uh, depending on which sky you pick. It'll actually adjust the exposure. So I'm gonna actually jump into um, this sunset one, and we have a, we even have a helicopter in the background. Again, what we'd have to do in order to really make this work a little bit better is we probably have to adjust a little bit of our color. So what I would do is I would warm up the image a bit. All right, and there we go. And then we have sort of a more of a matching of both the actual image and the skyline or the, the changed sky. Let's jump into another situation where you know, you may be taking pictures. I was taking a picture in in um, a town close to where I live, and you know, you have all of these power lines all over the place. The power lines aren't underground, so it's a little difficult um, to take pictures without getting power lines in there. But sometimes, maybe you just want to see the sky. You don't want to see the power lines. So normally, you would have to go in and you would have to find the the clone. Uh, brush and you would have to find a sample and sample that that area and then uh, you know go ahead and try and clone out each and every part of this line right this power line 
you don't have to do that anymore. This is this is actually really, really cool. Uh, Luminar has added in something that's super cool. If you go under the erase area and you hit remove power lines, it'll take a moment and it's actually figuring out where all the power lines are. It's reading the image and then it's actually going to take out the power lines. And voila, as you can see here, all the power lines are gone. Now I'm going to hit backslash again so you can see what it looked like before, then after, before, and then after. So let's talk a little bit about how to enhance faces, okay? On the face, you can do a few different things. You can add a face light. So what that does is it'll, it'll actually, Luminar will actually find out where the faces are in your scene and it'll I'll add like a fake key light which is cool. Um, you can also slim a person's face. So if I go like this, I can slim her, I can slim Sarah's face down a little bit, right? If, if, if maybe, you know how they say the camera adds 10 pounds, right? Well, we'll take back those 10 pounds. At least it does for me. Um, and I, I'm slimming down her face just slightly. And then I'm going to go to eyes. And in eyes, you have a lot of different things. You have um, iris visibility. You have iris flare. You have enlarged eyes. You have uh, eye whitening, eye enhance, red eye, a whole bunch of other stuff. What I'm going to focus on is the eye whitening and the eye enhancing. So I'm going to bring this up and brighten up her eyes a little bit and make her eyes a little bit wider. So already you can see the difference. If you want to see before and after, already there's a difference. The eye is definitely whiter. I'm going to go and add an eye enhancing. So eye enhancing basically like adds more contrast and brightness and saturation to the the pupils and the and the the eye itself. So it just makes it pop a lot more. So here's how our eyes look before, here's how our eyes look after. Right? And right just those that little change just makes everything pop a little bit more. Now I'm going to go under skin and under skin I'm going to add a little bit more of a skin retouching. So I, basically this particular slider, the amount slider is the amount of retouching I want on, on her skin. Um, so I'm gonna go to about 50%. And as you can see, if I zoom in right now, her face, so this is how it was before. That's her skin before, the skin after. Her skin was pretty good regardless, but I'm just adding a little bit more to soften up her face a little bit. Here is another example um, with my homegirl Rhonda, uh, where a few things are happening. Um, I need to straighten out this picture, but then I also want to make her eyes pop a little bit more, take away a little bit of the shine off of her skin, and I want to maybe give a little bit more shape to her body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first press the C button, and I'm going to just turn this so it straightens out a little bit more. Perfect. I'm going to hit return and now it's straightened out. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to go to face and I'm going to add a little bit of a face light, right? So if I go all the way, you can see it's, it's a little bit too much, but I'm just going to go in and just add a little bit of a face light. Let me just slim her face just slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to eye enhancing. I'm going to drag that up. So we have her eyes popping out a little bit more. Maybe I might add a little bit of eye whitening. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the body slider and I'm just going to drag it in. And as I drag it in, I don't want to drag it in too much because then it's going to distort everything and make everything look really weird. And then I don't want to drag it to the left because that will make her larger than she really is. So I'm just going to go about maybe 4% on that. So I think that, that that looks good. You just want to adjust it a little bit. You don't want to make it look ridiculous, right? Now, the other thing that you can do with with Luminar Neo, which is really, really cool and a new feature, um, is that you can add bokeh. You can add a, a certain level of fake bokeh to your images. And the reason why I like this is because sometimes you're shooting with, with you know, slower lenses like the, the 24 to 105 or you know, F4, you know, those sort of lenses. And when you look back at the image, sometimes you wanted to maybe not get certain things in, um, in the image, right? Or you want to get away from distracting things. So like, you know, maybe there's this line here that's coming out of her head. I didn't really see when I was taking the picture, I was looking at more of these lines over here and whatever else, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first just straighten this out a little bit, straighten it out as best as I can. 
boom. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to actually um, go to the portrait bokeh area and I'm going to add a mount and watch what happens when I add, I add an amount. I'm going to go to something crazy. I'm going to go to like 75. Now, all of a sudden we have, we actually have bokeh and I didn't have bokeh in this image before. You can actually create a size of brush and then you can go in and you can kind of brush this area. But what's really interesting is so this, as you can see, automatically um, Luminar actually figured out who was the main sort of focus, which was obviously Sarah, the model. And then it basically knows what's in the foreground, what's in the background, and it actually created this sort of look, right? This sort of bokeh look. So if I turn this off for a minute, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to before and after. So this is before, this is after, this is before, this is after, right? So it, it's already kind of giving you that look. Now it's not perfect, but if you're in a pinch and you wanna give a certain look, then I think that this is, probably the best way to look. So as you can see, Luminar Neo is a super powerful program with a lot of dope features. And honestly, I can't go through all of it. It'll take me like two hours to go through every single feature. I would say, you know, download it, try it out. And then if you like it, purchase it. The parent company of Luminar was located and founded in Ukraine um, and is now subsequently in the United States, but a lot of their workers, I believe they have 150 employees, a lot of their workers live and uh, work in Ukraine and now are displaced. A lot of them are safely out of the country or in other parts of the country that are safe. And frankly, like they're in trouble, right? They obviously the, their cities are being bombed and destroyed. Um, they're displaced from their home and from their family members. And, uh, Every little bit of support counts. So whether you donate uh, a little bit of money to UNICEF or to other organizations that will get the money to the people that need it in the Ukraine, or if you decide to purchase the app, um, when you purchase the app, those proceeds will go to the company, yes, but it will ultimately help people that live in Ukraine that are displaced right now that work for um, the company. And I think that it's a good cause. And I just, when I saw it, I felt like, you know what, I, I needed to let, you know, my tribe and my community know about it. And um, I'm encouraging you, if you are a, an aspiring photographer, uh, photographer or a digital storyteller that takes a lot of dope images and you just want a really powerful program that will help you uh, create some amazing uh, sort of finishes and finishing touches on your images, then definitely check out Luminar Neo. Anyways, until the next time, stay positive, stay blessed, and stay focused. Peace.